Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. So we want to welcome everybody that's here. If you're visiting for the first time, we give you a big manna from heaven, remnant of truth, embrace and hug, and we're not going to let you go. I said we're not going to let you go. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going nowhere. And complete it and say, because you're in the right place at the right time. Come on. <laughs> All right, you may be seated in... That's right. In heavenly places, the scripture says that we are seated in heavenly places and we need to remember that. If we can constantly remind ourselves of that very thing, we would have more victories in our life than defeats. Six amens. That's all I need. I just need one. One. As long as there's two of us in agreement, that's all I need. I'm excited about today, you guys. I don't know about you. Today's going to be a very serious time, but at the same time, a time of revelation, a time of conviction, a time of deliverance, a time of healing, a time of reconciliation, a time of restoration, a time of empowerment, a time to move forward if you haven't been moving forward and don't ever look back again. I want to welcome our online families that are watching Right now, we just pray that Abba ministered to you also right where you're at. Because TVs, cameras, there's, there's no distance for prayer. There's no distance when the anointing of Abba comes upon and you begin to lift someone up wherever they are. Prayer has no bounds and no limitations. How do we know that? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of God, the word of Elohim is sharper than any two-edged sword. So there's not a, a weapon in this natural world that can compare to the word of the Most High. And not only that, when the word of the Most High is applied and, and it is activated through your prayer time, there isn't a natural force on the planet in the universe that can keep the word from piercing your heart. It cannot keep the word from making a journey into your past. It cannot hinder the word from making that journey down the corridors of your genealogy and editing the video and editing the tape of your generational iniquity and generational curses that tend to just creep up and pop up out of nowhere sometimes. The word of God, the word of Elohim is powerful. Did you hear what I said? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing the marrow, the bones, going into the depths, dividing between the spirit and the soul. And we're going to see this today because there's a spiritual surgery going to take place, you guys. My heart... I, my heart goes out to you guys, because you have to sit here and listen to this. But so do I. It's a blessing, you guys. It is a blessing. Abba, we thank you for this set-apart time. Your name is Kadosh. As the powers in the heavens cry, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. Abba, we cry the same thing. May your presence, Abba, remain in the midst of our life. May your presence begin to cause those things that seem to have been dead and gone and forgotten to be resurrected this day. Abba, we thank you that as your word goes forth, that healing is going to flood this place. And fear is going to have to run out of the lives of your people. Disease, sickness, all that is connected to the fall of man is to be surrendered this day. Abba, we thank you for the authority that you have given us through the Ruach HaKodesh, through your spirit. Because of the power of the resurrection, we arrest all distractions. We take authority over our fleshly nature. We command every demonic entity that might have had a plan to come this direction to go. To go in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. May your shalom that destroys all chaos that tries to lead your people away, may all the chaos and all the noise cease to exist. And we thank you, Abba, for the restoration power of your word. Amen and amen. 
This week's Torah portion, if we can get that slide up there, hopefully. Let's all give Brittany a round of applause. She does more than we realize. She is just taking care of business so that you guys can enjoy at least some visuals for your learning. You guys need to comprehend this, and I know you do, you that are watching as well, but in case there's just someone that happens to pass by, we are not into entertaining anything. We are not into entertaining anybody. We are here to see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Elohim, be established and activated in the midst of our lives now. No more games. No more games. We've been playing games for almost 2,000 years as believers. No more games. No more religious games. This week's Torah portion, we, I don't see how you can separate these two Torah portions. These two studies in scripture that are found in the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, the book of calling. It's called the book of calling. Chapter 12 through 15. Tazria ha metzora. She conceives the leper. That alone is a, is a sermon all by itself. But we want to dive in and, and look at some things. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Actually, one verse in the book of Luke. Let's turn to the book of Luke. If you got your scriptures, say hallelujah. If you don't have your scriptures, say shucks. I'll bring it again next time. Okay, everybody has their word. That's good. Chapter 7 of Luke, verse 22, says this. And Yeshua answering said to them, go. Everybody say go. go. Report to Yohanan, John the Immerser, which you have seen and heard. Look at your neighbor and say, what we have seen and what we have heard. Blind receiving their sight. I'm speaking strategically. I'm on a mission. I, I've been sent with this today. I am on a mission I am on a mission. Blind receiving their sight. Lame that begin to walk again. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear again. The dead are raised. And the good news is brought to those whose spirits have been crushed. <laughs> you see, the good news, the gospel, as we know, I'm going to use terms, hopefully the religious folks come out of the woodworks. I want you to judge what I'm not going to say at your bidding. I want the Pharisees to manifest themselves so that we can cut the edge of their seat seat off so they can come to a humble place using the word of the Most High. Tazria and Metzora. Look at your neighbor and say a double portion. I want to say this to everyone that might be reading, listening, watching, you are the ones that want the wisdom of Abba's word. You are the one that wants the knowledge of his word. And you are the one that wants the understanding of the kingdom that has come. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. You're not here. I don't believe we're sitting amongst multitudes. Am I sitting amongst multitudes? I don't think so. I'm sitting amongst the students of the kingdom. The Talmudim of Yeshua HaMashiach. Notice, if we go back in Genesis, notice something in regards to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is called that very thing, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Notice it's not called the tree of the wisdom of good and evil. Notice it's not called the tree of the understanding of good and evil. It's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? Because knowledge by itself is not ready for transition. Knowledge must be communicated through wisdom. And when that knowledge is communicated through wisdom, then the understanding comes. And what is understanding? Bina. It's the ability to build. So without the wisdom and without the understanding, you stand as a tree of knowledge of good and evil and nothing else. <clears throat> Knowledge alone removes the building blocks of the kingdom here on earth. Wisdom and understanding work hand in hand and side by side. In Matthew chapter 13, you can turn there if you want. You don't have to. We've done a series on the parables of the Mashiach. In Matthew chapter 13, Yeshua speaks a parabolic language to the multitudes as well as to his Talmudim. 
Parabolic language is a style of teaching. Pay attention to me, please. It's a style of teaching where truth is purposely hidden from the listeners so they can search out and discover the insights in their season. The Mashiach spoke parables on purpose so that not everybody would understand. <clears throat> Powerful. Parabolic language is using stories that people can relate to. The purpose of the parable is to hide the truth, but hide it in a way that the student, listen to me, that the student can find it. I hope you're paying attention. We're building a small foundation and we're going to take off. I see people being free today from a lot of stuff. You see, Abba's using manna, using remnant, using kol, kara, habidmar, bamidbar, excuse me, using emet, la Torah, using remnant remedy, using ministries, bringing this unity together so he can do a greater work. But remember this, zealous ignorance is dangerous. You can be zealous for something you have no knowledge of. That is very dangerous. But Abba says, okay, I'm going to use you guys on the northwestern Pacific area for a powerful thing, but i got to collectively bring you together and make sure there's no egos and inner plans of their own that are just stifling the plan of the Most High, and I've got to clean all of us up. That's why we've been in such a weird transition. It's been very strange. The ones who are of the multitudes do not comprehend what Abba's doing. They're saying, let's just get on with the program. I came here with my popcorn and soda. You have to entertain me. <laughs> I didn't come here to make friends. You know why? Because I'm a monk's family. The purpose of the parable is to hide the truth, but hide it in a way that you can find it. The Mashiach taught this way when he spoke and when he was amongst everybody. He taught this way. Nothing will ever be yours, you guys. Catch this. Nothing will, you can never claim something to be yours until you discover it. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2 says this, and I'm going to read it just from the King James and then kind of go some uh, different direction. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2 says this, it is the glory of God to conceal a, a matter and it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. What this really says is this, it is the kavod, it is the weightiness of the creator. Notice it doesn't say Yahweh and it doesn't say Adonai. It says Elohim, the creator. It is the heavy weight shkinah of the one who can recreate your life that hides his, his word and hides your remedy inside of his word. But it will take a like-minded individual who knows they're a king and a priest of a kingdom, not of this world, to search that word out and apply that word to their life and put on the full armor and never take it off again. This Hebrew phrase is kavod Elohim ha siter dabar ve kavod melachim. Say melachim. Melachim hakor davar. Melachim, it's interesting. I've mentioned wisdom and understanding. Chokma and bina. Say chokma and bina. Chokma and bina just happen to have the same value for the word melachim. You see that? Kings and priests have the whole package. I don't think you heard anything I said on this side. I'll go back over on this side. <laughs> Kings and priests contain the whole package. You heard me. I'm just giving you a hard time. You heard me also. Kings and priests in Mashiach have the whole package. We are those who have the knowledge of truth. We are those who know how to apply the knowledge through wisdom. And our heart's desire is to build his kingdom only on the earth and not our own. That's understanding. That's Bina. 
when his kingdom is established, what did the Mashiach say? And we'll read the verse later. He says, you go tell John what you see and what you heard. You're seeing the manifestation of my kingdom in the midst of a unified people. Blind eyes are opening up. Deaf ears are opening up. The dead are being raised. Sicknesses and diseases are being shriveled up. Fear and chaos and disease are bowing to the master's authority that is in our life. When wisdom and understanding are united, we have the Hebrew word melachim, which is kings. Kings, those of a royal priesthood. And I'm not teaching some nonsense that we hear sometimes. It's is Bible truth. We need to be empowered as servants and sons and daughters, kings and priests of his kingdom. No more Torah games. This world is in a leprous condition, you guys. It's no coincidence the Mashiach is called the leper Messiah. He comes to absorb what should have never been born. I'm going somewhere. There's a difference between a, between a student, a Talmudim, students, and the multitudes. You guys want to know the difference between those two? Because the Mashiach, he spoke to the multitudes in parables. And he pulled his disciples aside over here and said, now let me give you the secrets of the kingdom. Why? Because you left everything for me. So we're going to go this direction. How many of you are willing to leave it all for his kingdom? Some of you. Some of you. Some of you have been in the military. And you were risking your life for people like us, for this country. You're risking your life. You, the Father, has his eyes on people like you because you know what it is to stare death right in the face and not be afraid. To, to face every opposition and not knowing if your life is going to be spared or taken at any given moment. Abba is looking for soldiers of his kingdom. Why? There's a battle going on outside these walls. We should not be battling in here with leprosy. There are so many forms of leprosy, and one of them is called envy. Another one is called jealousy. Another one is called self-righteousness. These are all garments of leprosy that are being stripped right now. You can't claim to put on Mashiach when you struggle with a leprous garment and you think people are going to come and attach themselves to the seat seat of your garment. You're going to infect them with what you have. And now you just gave birth to a bastard son and child, a daughter. Excuse my language, but that's in the King James Bible. And as a matter of fact, you go to Deuteronomy, the bastard child holds a curse to the tenth generation, not the third and the fourth. If you have been one that has been rejected and you have no identity because you, didn't, you were set free from your father and mother through rejection, Abba says, I'm giving you an identity today, son. I'm giving you an identity today, daughter. These things are coming off. You are accepted in the beloved. You are a son and a daughter of the kingdom. I came to fight against rejection and fear today. You know what I'm fighting? How I'm fighting? The weapons of my warfare are not carnal. I'm using the Ruach HaKodesh in my life right now. I came to warfare against what is oppressing the people of Yah. Because that's what a shepherd's supposed to do. Feed the flock with their nutrients from the word and battle for the sheep when they, can't know, when they don't know how to fight for themselves. So let me give you the difference. Truth is hidden from the multitudes. Note that down mentally, write it down. I don't care, however you can do it. Why? Because multitudes are not really interested. They're only entertained. When is the pastor going to get done? We've been here for an hour and 15 minutes. Get that leprous complaining garment off of you and get your butt up here and repent of your complaining. Students of the word are those who dedicate themselves in the word and invest into that very word. Students of the word invest in the ministry. They are a part of whether it's their talents, time, resources, or all of the above. That's a true student. Those who invest into the things of Yah are immediately in a different class than the multitudes. Multitudes love free things, Pastor Dave. 
Give me something that costs me nothing. I'll do that if there's no pressure on me. I'll contribute to this with my time, talent, and resources only if it don't break my back or my bank. I'll be your Talmudim as long as you don't ruffle my feathers the wrong way. Well, you came to the wrong side of the town. <laughs> we here, we like to ruffle feathers to make sure there's no little ticks and fleas hiding. Some little, instead of mosquito bites, eagle bites. We want to make sure those eagle bites are not hiding amongst the feathers. We want to get that junk out of here. You guys know what I'm talking about. Because those ones aren't here. Just kidding. Just kidding. Come on now. Just want to make sure you're awake. I'm going to check on you guys. There's a quiz after this, so you better stay awake. If you're not awake, today's the day. Herb brought his staff. That's the staff we're going to crack right next to you if you're falling asleep. Just kind of make a little noise for you. Right, Herb? That's why he brought that. That's what a shepherd does. He has the staff to direct, the staff to remove stuff out, the staff to keep the serpents away, and then the staff to just kind of crack the sheep when they're not paying attention. It's called a love crack. But let's get back to these multitudes. They don't want to put something tangible into or for the things of Yah that are being taught. Elohim never reveals his secrets to the people who come to just take something for free. How does he study that? How does she find the secrets? And how come she sings that good? And how come this and how come that? Well, put yourself in this word and spend time. Invest your life into him. He invested his life into you. Hey, the Mashiach could have stood up in the heavens and just enjoyed all the praise and worship going on, right? He came down here in the midst of all this mud and mire and muck and sin, took the garment of our leprosy on himself, came down here and invested, the Father invested his son into this world. And we can't invest just a little bit of time into him. Come on now. And I want the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Man, you, come on. You got to do something. He won't reveal his kingdom to people who just want what they can get. Proverbs 8, 17, write this down. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early, you will find me. That's a promise. That's a promise. You guys got to know when a preacher comes up here to preach and you're offended, you don't get mad at us. We're not talking about you. It's the Father's getting your attention. You get home, you repent of that pride, and you allow the word to work in your life so you come back the next Shabbat without that junk. That's how that works. We hear it all the time. I think you were talking about me. We sure were not, but the Father was, and I'm glad you were listening. Elohim's plan and purpose is to do what? To extend, to establish, to expand his kingdom. Listen to me. Elohim has always had the plan of what is known as colonizing this planet. I got that from a cartoon called Ants, colonizing. I had to find a, a, a very intelligent word that I usually don't use, and I saw it on the cartoon Ants. Don't get mad. Don't judge me. Come on now. Don't be judging me. He's always had the plan of colonizing this earth with his Malchut HaShemayim, the kingdom of heaven, and it's also known as imperialization. An imperial kingdom dominion. I'm not teaching some guy's stuff on, on ancient Near East anything. I'm just focusing on this word imperialization. An imperial kingdom dominion. Listen to me. To colonize a territory means to influence the territory with this dominion. It's what's called an infusion. We're going somewhere. The devil, you know what? Satan, if he was here, he'd be shaking. He, he's not afraid of us. He's not afraid. Listen to me. He's not afraid of the crucifixion of Mashiach. Let's just follow me. He's not afraid of the Passover because he was there at the Passover. There was a seat for him. He was just unworthy, could not eat of that Passover. What the, what the enemy is afraid of is when the people begin to give birth to his kingdom in his face. When the kingdom is coming forth, see, we're, we've missed it in the Hebrew roots and, and, and messianic, whatever you call these things today, because we've learned the, the full counsel of the word, but we've kicked out the empowerment that should be in our life. 
Come on now. We need the whole package, you guys. I'm not leaving here the same. I'm being ministered. He's ministered to me for a week and a half on this whole thing, and I've been in tears for myself, but also for you guys and those who will come. I got news for you guys. I hope you guys are going to shout for this one. Guess what? When you die, are you ready? You do not go to heaven. It's exciting, isn't it? Right? And there is no rapture that has been taught by the church. And I'm not judging the church at all. I'm, I'm judging that false doctrine. There's no rapture like what we thought. The earth is yours and the earth is our inheritance. Why would you want to leave your inheritance? <laughs> The earth belongs to us as sons and daughters of the only true king. And we down here create the Jacob's ladder to have heaven on earth, a constant communication. But he needs sons and daughters that are willing to be changed and transformed from the inside out. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? I ain't laughing at you guys. I'm laughing at all the enemy because the enemy's defeated. He's like under our feet. I, I feel an inch taller because he's so far under our feet. How many people love your king? Amen. Elohim is the imperial power in heaven and his influence sits in his very kingdom. Listen to what I'm saying. How many people are in a hurry today? How many people are not? So let's, today's different. Let's just wait till this guy's done. Is that Okay. Because someone needs prayer, and we're going to pray for whoever needs prayer. Just wait and let this word rub you wrong and rub you right and rub you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let the word just make you uncomfortable today. Is that okay? Because we get comfortable at the movies, at, the, at, at football games, all this other nonsense. And we sit there for hours with it, never complaining, ever. Unless someone's in your way from watching all the Nephilim running around with a ball down there. <laughs> I'm just calling it like it is. We sugarcoated it now. Let me stay on point here, you guys. Behave yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, come on now, let the guy preach. Someone said, you know what, will he hurry up and get done? I'm not taking off this leprous garment. Mashiach said, the kingdom or the reign of heaven is inside of us. So that means if, if, if Abba sits on the throne of his kingdom, he's everywhere at the same time, and the Mashiach says the kingdom is inside of you breaking out, then he's the one that should be ruling and reigning in our life. When that kingdom breaks out, his presence, his influence, his nature, his image should impact everyone around you. Your spirit will draw that which is inside of you to you. Whatever spirit you have is what you'll be drawn to. Just hear me out. If you get mad at me, I, I, I'm not worried about it. Trust me, I'm not. When you've been left forsaken and, and just kicked to the curb, when you come back into the flock, the Father restores you, you got some armor on your side. It's called, I'm not worried about rejection or, or what people have to say because it's not about me. I'm going to deliver the message, sh wash my hands, and leave, and that's it. We did our part. We are to be a colonized community infused with the kingdom of heaven. Elohim desired to fill the earth with his very nature, and the weight of his kavod, his glory, is the very nature which is his image. When we come together collectively, it's the nature of Elohim entering the room. That's why when you see each other, take a step of faith, especially the one you don't like sitting next to, and say, hey, good day, your majesty. Scripture says we're kings and priests. Good day. I'm saying it to all of you watching. Everyone. Good day, your majesty. I'm, I'm lifting you guys up. I'm lifting the countenance of someone up. I'm getting somewhere. Some things might sound funny, but I'm not here to play games. I'm being serious. Someone has been downtrodden, and this is the day that you stand on your feet. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're forbidden. Listen. Listen, we're forbidden to bow to idols. You guys know this commandment. But we kept it on a religious plane of something tangible. That's it. 
Yes, the scripture talks about making things of heaven and earth and in the ocean. Do not do that. But there are idols that people worship. They never knew they were worshiping. Guess what? We are idol exposers. I love exposing idols, Pastor Dave. I love doing it. You know why? Because his name gets glory and honor. The scripture says in the book of Hebrew, it's book of Ephesians, it says, expose all the evil works of darkness. That's the love of God. That's the love of Elohim. Exposing the evil and revealing the righteous things for the people of Yah. Let's look at some of these idols, or listen. Fear is an idol. Rejection is an idol. Sin is an idol. Envy is an idol. Jealousy, these are all idols, and the list goes on and on and on. We are not to bow to the idols or surrender to them. We must clean the house out of all of this junk. We're going somewhere. We'll get into the Torah portion right now, but just follow me, please. Earth is is as it is in heaven according to the prayer that is not the Lord's prayer. It's not Yeshua's prayer. It is a prayer for the people. And the Mashiach didn't have to confess any sin, did not have to confess his asham, his, his guilt towards one another. He didn't have to con confess any transgressions. The scripture says that, yes, he was tempted, not tested, tempted in all manners as we are, yet he had no sin in him. We do. We have to destroy these idols. Our Father who is in heaven, Kadosh is your name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom reign come here on earth as it is in heaven. Earth is to be infused with the very nature of Yah himself. Mashiach is the king. He is not here on earth but at the right hand of power. Some 2,000 years ago, the king came to earth and he proclaimed, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven has returned. I hope you're hearing me. When Shiach was walking and the king, even the demons knew, fall over, it's when the Mashiach stood, it's as if a ripple effect went from the ground across the sea over into this area where demonic legions were at. Even the legions know the kingdom has come. The kingdom has returned. When we go to pray over someone and they receive a healing, in the midst of that, you speak to that spirit and that soul and you say, the kingdom of Elohim has come on you. The kingdom has come, therefore you are made restored. Go and sin no more. If Mashiach only said what his father was doing, then let's say what the Mashiach said and did. We can't go wrong, right? We can't go wrong. If we, if we do what he said, then we have all the pressure is on him. That makes it easy on us. As soon as we think we're the ones doing something, guess what? The father's sitting back saying, go ahead and play games. You go ahead. You think you're doing something, you go right ahead and nothing's going to happen. I'm helping someone right now. I know I am. His blood connected us back to the kingdom. He said, as I go, I will send one just like myself who will empower you. Listen to me as the kingdom of priests to establish the influence and the infusion of my father, my Abba, who is in heaven here on earth. Whatever you are struggling with is not in heaven above. Listen to me, please. Whatever you're struggling with is not from heaven. It's not from the kingdom of Yah. It's from the enemy. It's from the kingdom of darkness. We're exposing the evil. I hope you're following with me. We must be radical for his kingdom and step out on his word and establish his kingdom influence into the earth, the earth through his imperial power. And it's time for the kingdom colonization to take place right now. Right now. If you're watching right now. If you're in here, right now. Right now, not tomorrow. Abba, we're, we're not waiting for tomorrow because it's not promised to us. Abba, let your kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Elohim, colonize our life right now. Colonize this area right now. Colonize this region right now. Beginning in this natural heart of ours and culminating and overflowing like the Willamette or however you pronounce that river's overflowing. Let it overflow, 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 overflow. The governing power here on earth is Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit is the governing power in our life.
The Mashiach proved it. He says, if I don't go, I will not, you will not be empowered. He says, I leave to send someone just like myself. Like who? Like the word. He's, I'm the natural word. I'm the manifested written word, manifested in the flesh, and my spirit is the spirit of the Torah. The empowerment of the Torah. We have the natural word manifest walking in our midst, right? And we have the spirit of the Torah walking inside of us. Yeah. Oh, man, you guys don't get it yet. Come on now. I know you get it up on the top. You're where the fire's at. It's nice and warm up there. <laughs> Notice all who were in the upper room. Here's a surprise. Surprise, surprise. Everyone who was in the upper room was not of the Levitical order of sacrifice. The Levitical priests paved the way. They were the descendants with John the Baptist. They paved the way some 1,500 years ago. Paved the way for the coming king. Paved the way how to come close to the Father. Paved the way for everything kingdom. And when Mashiach came, the Levites found their fulfillment in him. And he established and says, now you go. Now you go. He says, my temple has feet. My temple has legs. He says, you have legs, you have feet, you need to go out where my living temple's at, out in the nations, and retrieve my sons and daughters. <laughs> You're getting it now. You're starting to get it. I love it. <laughs> oh, man, I love Abba. Whatever you're struggling with is not in heaven above. We, all, we know these types of things. So these individuals, these Levites that we see today or back then, they paved the way for the coming kingdom of heaven influence. So we can't be pulling the book of Leviticus out and kicking that out and saying, oh, now Mashiach's coming. We could throw this. No, 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 no. You don't touch anything. The full counsel of the word is there. Even with the things you don't believe should be there, you weren't there. There's nothing with your autograph in the right-hand corner saying, oh, I was with Paul at this time. Sit down somewhere. Right, Ashley? <laughs> Ashley tells me that all the time. Sit down, Dad. She's really saying, Dad, you got to keep learning from the Mashiach. Sit down, Dad. Sit down. So I sit down. Those infused with heaven's power and influence were of a higher order, and we see this in Tazriah and Metzorah. With the two birds for the leper, one was slaughtered. Listen to that. It's interesting how the sacrificial system was. You have two birds in regards to the uh, uh, cleansing of the leper. The, the elements of hyssop and wood and scarlet are, are all inter, intertwined with the cleansing of the leper. Well, what do you know? These are some of the same elements that you see at Passover. So the Passover has the, the pinnacle point, the arrow tip power to transition us into sanctification. <laughs> Man. So one was slain, the other one was dipped in that blood, and it was let loose to flap around all that blood and splash it all over your nice pretty little dress and coat. To splash you all up. That bird took flight. Why were the bones of the bird not to be broken? Because the Father is teaching us is that the resurrection power you have, there is not a power on the earth that could break the flight strength of the resurrection power of our Mashiach. There's nothing that can break the flight of his resurrection. <laughs> I'm laughing in the enemy's face. You know why? Because he tried to destroy my family. He tried to destroy other families. He tried to destroy your life. And guess what? We laugh in joy, not out of pride, out of humility, because of his strength and his power that is in our life. Only the penitent heart will find him. Penitence is one heart that has been moved to deep repentance. Deep teshuvah. That's repentance, repentance, repentance. So now it's time to discover the truths hidden in this very study. The time for his kingdom reign to take place in our midst. Would you guys agree with that? 
He healed others. There's a phrase. Look at this. It was used through the prophets. It was used during, in the streets of Jerusalem. The Mashiach's healing everybody. He healed others but chose not to heal himself. Blessed are those who are not offended by this plain and challenging truth. Leviticus 12.1, And Yehoah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, When a woman has conceived and has given birth to a male child, I'm reading it verbatim how it is, Then she shall be unclean for seven days, as in the days of her monthly separation she is unclean. Or this is a nida state. It's a time of separation. I briefly mentioned the monthly cycle of the woman, which contains all the secret truths of the redemptive plan. So women, during that cycle of your month, instead of being grouchy at your husband... Or your brothers and sisters, not, every, not all of them are. Not every woman is. It doesn't happen in my house, really. But women, during that time, during that time, that's when we as pastors, we get like a little deaf, you know, just during this, we don't hear anything anymore. For some reason, for seven days, our hearing, we can't hear anything. So don't get mad at us. No, I'm just kidding. But let me go over here. So women, during that time of the month, spend time in your word and say, Abba, Gal unveil my eyes and unveil my eyes and unravel the concealed secrets of your redemptive plan during this season. Because right now, for these seven days, I'm sitting Sheva, and I'm sitting Sheva, and I'm Yashev, I'm sitting at your feet all at the same time because death is happening sitting Sheva for seven days. There's a death taking place, but at the same time, I'm Yashev. I'm sitting to learn. And husbands, leave your wife alone. She's not yours for seven days. She belongs to Abba. He's ministering to her. She's containing the most deepest secrets of redemption during this time. Well, what do you know? The Nida laws are in here. It's all here. Chapter 13, verses 1 through 59, deals with leprosy on the skin. Deals with the leprosy and the clothes, the beards, the eyebrows, and the homes. And if you look at this whole chapter, it's real interesting. All of a sudden, there's leprosy. It, it forms on the head. Netech in Hebrew. It forms on the head. It's a scab. They have to watch this. And it can go from the scab to the beard. It could go from the beard to the clothes. It could go from the clothes to your home. The fathers say, when a leprous condition is on you, you can't hide your sin. It will start to eat away at everything in your life. You can't hide. He says, come to the Kohen Haggadol. Come to the high priest, the bishop, the guardian of your soul, and allow him to peel away the dead flesh from your life. In chapter 14, it says this, And Yorei Vavi spoke to Moshe, saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper. The Torah portion should not be called Metzorah. It should be called ha Metzorah. That's what it says. There's a writing from a sage that said, We can't say that because then we're agreeing with the Messiah leper. And Christianity will jump through the roof because it's in our Torah. So let's just call it Metzorah. No, it is ha Metzorah, the leper. The definite article. That means the one. There is one here with a leprous condition that is taking place because because of the people of Israel. And we read these chapters, it gives all the details in there, which I'm not going to go into because we'd be here forever. But let's talk about Tazria. She conceives seed. That's what that word means. She conceives seed. It comes from the Hebrew word zara, which means to uh, seed. It's sowing. It's the word for sperm, offspring. The first time we see this is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and verse 29, dealing with what? The manifestation of that which was hidden. It's a birthing process. ha Metzorah, the leper, comes from tsara. Sarah is the word for leprosy, and it means to be stricken. It's the word to, be, to have a blow, to be hit, to strike, to be inflicted with leprosy, and also the word for scourging. The Mashiach was scourged, was scourged, was, was wounded, bruised, scourged, all of these things, stoned. The Messiah was also stoned. They didn't teach that in Sunday service church. He was stoned also to fulfill all righteousness. That's why when he, towards the end of his ministry, guess what happened? When he began to, I would not doubt, I'm going to just kind of narrate this, but when he was getting ready to walk back into the city towards the end of his ministry, all of a sudden the multitudes came and said, no, 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 you can't come in here. 
You can't come in here. Why? Because his appearance, he was taking upon himself our leprous condition in his body. But we don't believe that. I know you do, but you know, there's, there's a group called we. Just like there's a group called but. But this, but that. That's called the excuse group. They're not here. They're never here, right? The numerical value of of Sarah, the word for leprosy, has the same value, a a number system connected to, that's found in the Hebrew language, the same value for the Hebrew phrase, ezer kenegdo, the help meet for Adam. You see, the leprous condition was intended for the woman all along. Says The enemy says, if I can get her, she'll bring out fleshly sons after my flesh. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. Keep following me here. The same as Ezer Konegdo, the help me found in Genesis 2.18. But let's look at this word. Metzora. There's three other words here. We have Matsar, which means to be bound, to be confound to something, to be limited. We have Metzer, which means a boundary that you can't cross like a prison gate. We have metzar, which means what? A straight, a narrow place of distress. There's the narrow path of Mashiach, and then there's the narrow path of leprosy. Because of the mem prefix, this could reference a man who was bound, a man who was confined, a man who has been limited, someone who was in a narrow place of distress. They would have become a walking Mitzrayim, the word for Egypt. One who has leprosy is a walking limitation. And we know the rabbis, the sages say that leprosy is not some normal disease. It came because of Lashon Hara and Rechilut. Lashon Hara is evil speech. Rechilut is character assassination. When you speak, how do we know that it's connected to that? Because Miriam, she begins to speak. And the scripture says, yod heh vav heh heard what she said. He says, you're speaking, Guile. Now you're going to be a walking leprous condition so that everybody can hear you moaning. And crying and no longer gossiping and being a tail bearer. To open the womb from the inside out is one who holds the key. And we see the Mashiach. He's the one who opens the matrix. To open the womb from the inside out. He's the one who holds the keys to life and death. The one who opens the womb from the inside out is the one who unlocks the world of the, mirac- of the miraculous. The one who opens the womb from the inside out is he who is the healer. The one who opens the womb from the inside out is the great physician. The one who opens the womb from the inside out is the creator manifested. The one who opens the womb from the inside out is the key master and the king of kings. So let's go further. Let's keep going. Let's look at some permutations of the letters of tsara. Watch this. Tsara means leprosy, to become leprous and to be scourged. Ratsa means to be pierced, to bore, scourge with a strap. Ra'atz is the word to smash, to shatter, to crush, to smote, to breaking, and to breach as in a contract or a covenant. Aratz means this, power or a force that moves forward, causing to tremble the way a disease comes on someone and moves from the inside out. And then the final parts you see on the flesh of the outside. And then we have atsar, which means to arrest, to press, to squeeze, to rule. The full word of leprosy is tsara'at, and it has a permutation, as you can see up on the board, atzeret, remember? Simcha Torah, etc., the eighth day of celebration. So the Torah, the covenant of the Most High, is the antidote for a leprous condition. And the Torah, the covenant of the Most High, was manifested in the flesh. I hope you're tracking with me here. I hope you're tracking with me. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 2. Here's a little secret. It says this. Ishaki tazria veyalda zakar. Look at the initial letters. The initial letters of this it has the equivalence to a Hebrew phrase. Hamashiach haben David. The Messiah, the son of David. The Messiah, the son of David, is the one that the Torah is talking about. That the woman conceived. The woman is Israel. She conceived the leper Messiah. How do we know that? because of what took place in the beginning and we'll get to that in a little bit. 
the one who comes forth from the womb of the woman, the one who breaks the matrix code of mankind, matrix code of mankind, the great physician, the healer, the deliverer of Israel, the creator, the high priest, the Kohen Hagadol of the universe. Are you hearing me? The beginning and the end, he who was, he who is, and he who is to come is Yeshua HaMashiach himself. yod heh vav -Heh, in the flesh, as Psalms 110 is a Melchizedek psalm. The translators say, oh, no, 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 we can't put yod heh vav -Heh sitting at the right hand or sitting next to yod heh vav -Heh. It makes no sense. That's what the scripture says. Why? There was a bosom called El Shaddai. There was a bosom called El Shaddai. Remember Moses? The first time you see leprosy in Scripture, Moses, put your hand, your arm, put your right arm, Moses, in your bosom. Take your right arm out, Moses. It was leprous. Moses, now return the right arm back to your bosom. What is this teaching that he gave to Moses saying? Through my law, my Torah, it will reveal the sinful condition of Israel. But my right arm will come and take upon the leprous condition of Israel. How? I'm going to tear him out of my bosom. He is El Shaddai manifested in the flesh. He will come and take the leprous condition that you have. And then he will return to the bosom of Abba and you will be restored in the power of the right arm. <laughs> How many people love their king? How many kings ever? You show me one king who has ever laid his life down for his people. The only one, Tim, that, that stepped up, whatever that looks like, off of his throne, and he said, I'm ready to go. Even if it was just you, Jonathan. Even if it was just you, Rob. Even if it was just you, Mike. Even if it was just you, Gene. Even if it was just any one of us, Matthew. Dave, Brenda. If it was just you, that was good enough for him. All he needs is one. It is the king who comes and removes our leprous condition. I hope you guys are not in a hurry because I'm going to bulldoze right over the hurriness. That's my job today is to crush all hurriness. We're here to be set free. This message is for everybody. You that are watching, don't you get up and leave. You sit there. Let Abba minister to you and your family, man of the house. Your family has been crushed. What's going on? Woman, be faithful to your household. Build it up. Don't tear it down. Sit there. We're going to help you guys out. He comes to remove this leprous condition that is upon the entire universe. Yes, track with me now. Even the calendar system is in a leprous condition. Tsara equals 360. Pastor Dave has mentioned for years and probably one of the few that says, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if we're restored to a 360-day calendar. Well, he's got to deal with the leprosy first, Tsara, which is 360, so that the leprous condition can be removed even off of the solar system. He will come and return us back to his calendar. I'm going to prove it to you. I have scripture for everything. And if there's something I don't have a scripture for, me and Dave, we know everything. Me and Dave, you can ask us anything. We know everything. So if you ask me a question I don't know, that's the one that Dave knows. But we have an answer for everything. And if you believe that, we also own four islands right off of the Caribbean. You can come over anytime. Okay. So we just fixed that all really quick. You see that? So no leprosy sets in. He will come and return us back to a calendar of 360, which is a complete unit. Yes, even the added four days, making it a 364-day Enochian calendar is sick. And he comes to heal his appointed times that man has tainted through his speech and dogmatic domination over the unlearned people. So let's see if I have any kind of proof text of a 360-day calendar with using just some verses alone. Because to calculate a calendar, you need a sun, you need a moon, and you need celestial bodies. Right? 
Not terrestrial bodies interfering with everything all the time. You need the celestial bodies in the heavenlies. So let's look at this. Revelation 21, verse 23, and 22, verse 5. And the city had no need of the sun or of the moon. There goes the old calendar system out the window, 360 days all back here again with no more night. It's that easy. You see how simple that was? We just fixed it, Pastor Dave. So all you guys confused about calendars, here it is. Revelation chapter 21, and it can bring all the confusion to nothing in the end. Revelation 22, 5, and night shall be no more, and they shall have no need of a lamp or the light of the sun, because yod heh vav -Heh elohim shall give them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen and amen. <laughs> leprosy is a form of nakedness. Nakedness is the result of a leprous condition. 360 is also the value for the word found in Scripture after the fall back in Genesis 3, 7. Let's go there. Let's, let's, let's do this. You guys ready? Let's, let's get serious now. Come on, let's beat this fleshly nature down to a pulp and slam it up on the altar and leave it there to burn all night. Put some fuel on that flesh because I want to keep that sucker burning. <laughs> you got to forgive me. We're from Los Angeles. We're radical. So we're, 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 we're trying to get used to the beautiful weather and, and the more calm. But then when that anointing comes out, you can't help it. I can't help it. You guys got to pray for this guy. If you see them put, if you see manna say, okay, Pastor John's coming. Up, say, Father, pray. I pray for him. You know what? Because he can't stop moving around. <laughs> Look at Zach's shoulders are getting built because he's just moving the camera back and forth. I'm sorry, Zach. Zach, give it. Zach is really putting it in too. Now, let's, let's get here. Genesis 3, 7. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves. Woo! Fig leaves. I bet that's comfortable. Together and made loin coverings for themselves. And they heard the sound of yod heh vav -Heh elohim walking. The sound is the voice. The voice was walking in the garden. Imagine that. The voice making a movement like gigantic footsteps or maybe some very soft, gentle steps. If you're doing what Abba wants, it's probably gentle. If you're not doing what he wants, it's probably boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, here comes Papa. Papa again. <laughs> You've been a bad little boy and a bad little girl. I'm going to go get that fig branch and I'm going to let you guys have it. He didn't do that. It was worse. It was worse than that. Verse 9, and yod heh elohim called unto Adam and said, where are you? It's really like this. Adam, do you know where you have fallen to now? Adam, do you even know where you're at now? Do you realize what you guys have done, Adam? The voice that you once walked with, you're afraid of it now. You guys haven't even come together to make children, and yet you brought forth a couple of sons already called Naga and one called Fear. Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice. He didn't even say anything right up front. He's, he's uh, coming up with an excuse already, fig leaves. I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And the father goes on, who told you you were naked? Follow me, please. What Adam was saying was, I am covered in fear now. This is not funny. So I hid myself in excuses. Let that sink in for a minute. I'm covered in fear. He says it. I was afraid, so I hid myself. He was afraid first, and then the fig leaves come on. One who is, has been impacted by fear, all kinds of other stuff comes forth. You'll make an excuse for everything now. You're just walking in fig leaves. But you know what? I think the Garden of Eden had something on us today. We thought we invented stuff. Just hold on a second. I'm covered in fear, so I hid myself in excuses. The voice of leprosy cowards to the voice of life. Listen to me. The voice of leprosy cowards to the voice of life. Two words conversing together, one spirit and the other one of the flesh. The word for naked is erumim. Say erumim. It's from the root word Aram, and this word is found in Genesis 3.1. Remember, Adam and Eve said we were Erumim, and the Creator says, who told you you were Erumim? 
And it goes on, look at this word, Aram, is where Erumim, nakedness, comes from. It's found in Genesis 3.1 regarding the fallen state of Nachash. The Nachash was more naked, cunning. It's used for the word cunning. The Nachash was already naked, and he was luring them into his nakedness, which had brought forth fear upon all mankind. But look at this. Adam and the woman put on the naked or the cunning state of the nachash. Follow me now. This is going to get really interesting. Let's look at the word for fig leaves. We're going somewhere. This is, this is very deep stuff here. Fig leaves is ele te'ana. Say that. Ele te'ana. Ele is the word for leaves. The word for fig is te'ana. But let's look at this. Leaves is related to many Hebrew words such as going up, ola, and also excuses. The reason why no one's getting closer to Abba is because there's too many excuses. Get the excuses and use that as the fuel for the fire on the altar in your life. Come on now. It's going to get probably quieter and quieter as we move along, and that's what I'm hoping. Now, you think I'm kidding. So we see this here, Ola and excuses. The Hebrew word te'ena is actually very interesting. Look at this. It's the Hebrew word that actually means this. You can find it in the Hebrew Etymological Dictionary. The time when animals mate. Adam and Eve covered their reproductive areas with that which means the time that animals mate. I hope you're tracking, boy. Come on now. In a sense, man and woman join together in a way like animals in order to bring forth their, their descendants. Adam and the woman covered themselves in what would now be an open door for death and disease. This was passed on to everybody, but there is a remedy for this very thing that took place. The garment of light has now been replaced with a garment of skin. Not any skin, but the skin of leprosy born out of fear and excuses. The numerical value of Ele is 561. It's the same as Niflaot, that which is concealed or hidden. Gal Ainai Veabita Niflaot Mitoratecha. Unveil the truth. How? How can you unveil the truth when you're covered in leprosy? Adam and the woman's true nature was now hidden and concealed in what is known as the congealment. Mashiach has come to create all things new. 561 is equivalent to another Hebrew phrase, bara Mashiach. Mashiach creates or recreates. That's good news. Notice how the first time we see the foundation stone for all sickness. Follow me now. For all disease, for curse, ailments, struggles, generational iniquity, and generational sin. The foundation stone that everyone's drinking from is called fear. Track with me because we're all going to be set free of some hidden things. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. <clears throat> I mentioned here about our study direction in regards to chapter 12, chapter 13, and so on and so forth. In chapter 13, we had all the levels of leprosy, and we did that before one year. We went through the different scabbing, raising, and white, black, red. You name, we did that. We're not doing that this, this year because there's something else. We're going to go deeper than a scab. We can't go through this powerful chapter in detail, but it reveals the levels of sickness and its effects and the levels of acceptance leading to Mashiach's rule and reign in our lives. Throughout chapter 13, we have this word plague mentioned over and over and over again. The word for plague is naga. Look at your neighbor and say naga, which means to touch. What the Kohanim are dealing with is something that was born back in the Garden of Eden. What was born in the Garden of Eden? The touch. The woman gave birth to the touch. I can show you it in the Hebrew text. That's a whole thing of its own. It's very powerful. The woman gave birth to the touch. Just follow me. It's beyond the natural. The woman, in a sense, gave birth to this touch. Like us, listen, when we were born, they touched us with a birth certificate and a social security number said, here's your certificate for being leprous. Test me on that and I'll prove it to you. 
All who come after Adam and Chava have been touched with a plague. The plague begins generationally and finds its origin back in the Garden of Eden. Let's see this. Chapter 3, verse 3 of Genesis. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. He never said that. Lest you die. She added to the word. When you add and take away from the word, I don't blame you. That's normal, right? That's normal. To add and take away from the word of Elohim, it's normal. Why? Because normal is not supernatural. Normal is exactly what normal is, is allowing all sinful actions to come in. That's normal. So it's normal to add and take away, but that's because that's a leprous condition, those who add and take away from the word. The Hebrew word, shall ye touch it, is the Hebrew phrase, tegeu uh, bo, you shall touch him. You shall touch him. Right there, him, not it, him. This gave birth to a garment for the Mashiach. You shall touch him. This is a very deep thought, a very deep idea. This can also speak of a future time. Remember in John chapter 20, verse 11 to 17. Follow me, please. You can turn there if you want. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to highlight this. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb looking for who touched her life, the one that touched her life, the one that touched her life she was looking for. You see, you can touch people's lives and they'll always come looking for you. Whether you're touching them with something righteous and powerful or you're touching them with something opposite. She reaches out to the Mashiach, but the Mashiach says this, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Why? Because it was the woman also from the beginning who gave birth to the touch that came upon all mankind. Now it's the Mashiach. He's speaking to the woman in the beginning. He's looking past Mary Magdalene and he's saying, don't touch. He's going back in time saying, I'm undoing what you did and don't touch me. Don't touch. He's going back to Genesis and speaking to that moment. Don't touch the Nachash, the serpent deception, the seed of the serpent. Don't touch his seed because you'll produce his seed. <sighs> On a very deep level, Mashiach is fulfilling the process of destroying the touch by his ascension to the altar above. Mary, don't touch me. Mary, whose root meaning means bitterness, was admonished not to touch the resurrected body. Bitterness feeds fear and feeds resentment. Mary, so see the, the Torah is deep. It's going past an individual, past the name of the individual, bat, going past and going to the source of things. The F Mashiach saying, bitterness, you can't touch me. You can't touch me. I hope you're tracking because he's already doing something right now. I could see it in some of your eyes. Hallelujah. Mary, don't touch me. Mary, her root means bitterness. The powerful work of healing and cleansing of the first Adam was in full effect. And the once Naga touch that was upon mankind has now been laid to rest in the tomb and upon the new man who was resurrected from the dead known as the last Adam has now come forth with what the first Adam was supposed to walk in, but he did it. Mary, don't touch me. I'm about to do a work in the Garden of Eden that the Father zipped closed on the Temple Mount area. It's zipped closed by the mountains of Moriah. We walk past it during all the tours all the time, right? We're walking right past the whole area where Garden of Eden was, but we can't see it because the Father hid it. He says, your leprous condition closes up the gap. It closes up and you can't enter that right now. It's going to take a fiery sword of my spirit that the cherubim, the cherubim are guarding. It's going to take that fiery sword to check you at the last moment to see if you're worthy to come in. I'm going to check your bones and smell them. The, the sword of the spirit cuts through the flesh and goes down to the bones. Isaiah 11.3, he's going to smell the bones of his people to see if the image is inside of them. What image? The image of Elohim. <clears throat> Mary, I'm going to man's original home where he was evicted from, and I'm going to prepare a clean place for him. 
I will come again and bring you with me, but wait in Jerusalem until the time. Why would the people not want Yeshua coming into the city? Why did they tell him, please don't come in here? Because towards the end, as I mentioned before, the end of his ministry, the leprous condition was coming upon him. Luke chapter 4, verse 23, out of the words of the Mashiach himself, he says, no doubt shall you say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Why did he say that? Because of what? A scourging? No. Because of a crown of thorns, didn't happen yet. Because of a stoning, that didn't happen yet. Because everybody he touched, he, if you were blind, he absorbed your blindness and it came on him. If he, you were deaf, he absorbed that. He absorbed every sickness. And he healed the lepers. No one ever healed a leper except for Naaman the prophet. That was it. No one had that powerful anointing to heal the leprous condition but the leper Messiah who absorbs man's sickness and disease. There's an ordinal value to that that has the equivalent to the Hebrew phrase ha-adama, the ground. The very ground which Adam was formed from became leprous. That's why cursed is the ground for your sake. Why? He says, I'm going to have to touch the entire planet. The building structure and the building material of man is leprous now too, Adam. I have to absorb this and I have to heal this very thing also. That's why his blood had to hit the ground too. Because his blood was sanctifying the Adama, the ground where Adam came from. And if you look at that Hebrew word, He, Aleph, Dam, Dalit, Mem, He. Adam, the last Adam's in the center of the two Hey. So he says, this Adam will be planted in the earth so that I can give out my hay to the people of Yah, the breath, the nas, the breath of Yah, the two Hays inside of the spirit of man. <laughs> Mashiach was touched by man's sin. The woman prepared a garment touched by adding to Yahweh's word seen in Genesis 3. Mashiach was more than pierced, you guys. He was more than scourged. He was more than beaten. He was more than stoned. He was touched by all of our sickness and disease and even fear touched the Mashiach. The origin of all sickness, disease, and ailment, which is fear, is one that touched the Mashiach. Why? The fear, the spirit of fear. It's a spirit of fear. Some might say, no, it's not. That's Pentecostalism. No, get that out of your mind too. Father, we just helped deliver that mind. Because it's beyond a, a denomination. It's true. There's also a spirit of python. Uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. The woman that with divination going to ta taunting Paul, remember? She's taunting Paul, taunting Paul. And Paul turns and says, you spirit of divination, come out of her. Look at the Greek word. You spirit of python, come out of her. It's the word python. What's a python? It constricts the breath in someone to crush their foundational structure. That's what the enemy does. He wants to constrict you from breathing and, and, and internalizing the things of the spirit so he can destroy the foundations in your life. But there's a spirit of fear. And that spirit of fear came on the Mashiach in the garden just before his crucifixion. Let's turn there. Matthew 26 verse 39. Is this helping anybody or should I stop now? Because Dave, he, he's going to let me know, like, Lotto will let me know. You know, you guys will be, no, no, we're going for it. We're going for this. Matthew 26, 39. <clears throat> and going forward a little, he fell on his face and prayed, Oh, my Abba, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I desire, but as you desire. The Mashiach in his flesh felt the presence of fear come into the garden. The final enemy before death is cast into the lake of fire, Mashiach had to overcome the fear. The Hebrew word haku, hakos is the cup. The cup of judgment, the cup of decay. Mashiach overcame the origin of all sickness and disease that, that took place in the garden. This garden was manifested, the cup. He drank our penalty of sickness and disease. 
And I'm going to ask this question. Why hasn't anyone spoken of this part in John chapter 19, verse 41? How come no one has talked about what we're about to read right now? John 19, 41. And at the place where he was crucified, okay? We got that, correct? There was the garden, and in the garden a fresh tomb in which no one had ever laid before. How come on the tours they have the crucifixion in some place that it's really not there and the tomb in another place that's really not there when they're both in the same location? John chapter 19, that's a, that's a witness right there. The tomb where he was buried is right next to where he was crucified. Who changed the location? Ah, maybe it's because when leprous conditions come in, man wants to spread all his nonsense and all his leprosy to everybody else so that they'll praise his garment of leprosy that he's wearing with his leprous crown, his leprous everything. I told you it was going to get quieter. He was also buried in a tomb that had never been touched. The same location of his crucifixion. It's all about the touch. One touch healed the woman with the issue of blood. One touch opened the deaf ears. One touch opened the blind eyes. One touch raised the dead. One touch heals your soul. One touch delivers you from the spirit of fear. One touch heals all of our infirmities and diseases. One touch breaks the generational curses and generational iniquity hidden in characteristics. One touch sails across the DNA ocean where the soul of man lives. One touch regenerates you and I. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Let's speak on the different levels of infirmities and diseases. But before we do this, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 52 and 53. This is a proof text. I'm going to tell you guys, Isaiah 54 is the chapter to help you with resentment and rejection and fear. Read it. Isaiah 54 is. That's just for you. That's a side note. Isaiah 52, 13 to 15. See, my servant shall work wisely. He shall be exalted and lifted up and very high. As many as were astonished at you, so disfigurement beyond any man's and his form beyond the sons of men. He shall likewise startle many nations. Sovereigns shut their mouths at him. For what had not been recounted to them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, they shall understand. Why? The Mashiach had to take the leprous condition of mankind on himself so he can rebuild this earth all over again. Boy, I'm going to step on some toes in just a minute. Isaiah 53. Who has amended our report? You can look at that word. It's aman. Who has amended? Or who has come into the place of agreement? And to whom was the arm? There is the arm of yod heh revealed. For he grew up with him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or splendor. Follow along. Get a hold of your flesh. If you're tired, just stand up, jump around. It doesn't bother me. I'm not moved by babies crying and by people moving around. I'm not moved by that. But my spirit gets moved when people start falling asleep on Abba's word. We're going to start pointing you out and pour some water on you. Just kidding. For he grew up. His splendor, no splendor that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should desire him. Despised and rejected. These are all connected to a disease, you guys, all of these things. Despi I'm, I'm act when I'm reading this, do you know that these are names of entities? So they're being ruffled as we're ministering right now. These things are being ruffled. They know this day is the day of freedom, and this day they are evicted. They have to go. A man of pains, knowing sickness, and as one from the as one, excuse me, and as one from whom the face is hidden, that's a leprous condition, being despised, and we did not consider him truly. He has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains, yet we reckoned him stricken, smitten by Elohim, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our crookedness, the chastisement for our shalom was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep went astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way. 
That's how you know when someone has their, they don't want to come to community. You know, here's another garment of leprosy. When people, I'm going to be, can I be transparent? When people only want to come when Dave's preaching and then you stay home because you don't like this guy or this lady. That's leprosy. Stay home forever. We don't want you back here. So don't come back. Don't come back. We could tell by handshakes and eye contact that you don't like and you're bothered by people. That's because your spirit is leprous and it doesn't like what Abba's doing. If you don't want to be here, don't come back ever again. We don't need you here. Bye. Seriously, get out of here. We did this down in L.A. I said, you don't want to be here? Don't come back. Please do us a favor. We want the spirit moving in here, not sluggish slugs. Don't play those leprous games with Abba's kingdom. No more. Come on. You come to Shabbat, you be faithful. Because if you're here to see a man, then you created an idol. If you don't want to be here because you don't like someone, you have leprosy. Get the heck out of here. We don't want this house leprous. Bye. Don't come back. And anybody that don't like it, I, 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 I can all, we can always talk. I'll sit here and just listen. But make sure you bring Bible, not emotions. Because I will shut the emotions down. If you're embarrassed, that's on you. Don't come back if you don't like this guy, that lady. That, don't come here no more. Get out of here. Abba wants to, fresh hearts here. If you can't, or get up here, repent, and don't do that anymore. I've been known to call, point this stuff out, and I will. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. But remember, when I do that, there's, what, four fingers pointing at John. But seriously, don't bring your leprosy here. We don't want it there no more. Get out of here. All right, let's get back to business. All the petty stuff is taken care of. Elohim is no respecter of persons. He doesn't respect or show favoritism for this fictitious world that we live in. Healing is for those who come to the altar, who come to the foot of the tree where our master was crucified. Many in the Messianic and Hebrew roots communities need to pay a fresh visit to that place where our master's blood dripped down the tree and confess the deep sin that has estranged you and has wrapped up you in fear and pride. This is a place of restoration. People have names called restoration this, restoration that, and they're killing families and people. They're leprous too. I don't know who they are. They're out there somewhere, but Abba's doing a work here with remnant and manna. This is a, a spiritual hospital. You come here, we will not give you chemicals that only make things worse. We're going to give you the unadulterated word of Yah that you take three times a day with plenty of water. Isaiah 52, let's look at this. <clears throat> let's look at the phrase disfigurement. See, when you're dealing with leprosy, it gets very heated. It gets uncomfortable. Men, you need to run, you, not run your house, but you need to run with the call of Yah, and you need to rule your house well. That doesn't mean taskmaster. Remember ruling? Yeah, I'm the man of the house. She knows that. I'm going to rule the house. Come on now. The word for rule is the same word we get the word proverb from. You're supposed to be wisdom in your house, not some dumb dictator. Come on now, man. Let's look at this phrase for disfigurement. It's the Hebrew word mishchat. Notice the word mashiach or mashach. The smearing of the anointing is right inside of that word. Right there. Look at that. Mashach, that's the where we get the anointing, the smear, the anointing. And then you have the tav, which is the tree where he's crucified, right? Where he brings two things that were once separate and unites them and makes covenant with them. Mishchat from shachat, which means to decay and destroy. The anointing does destroy the leprous condition. The anointing destroys and stops the, the, the decay. Remember the plague that hit Israel and Aaron had to get that incense and he ran probably the fastest in his life and all, pulled hamstrings and everything, ran and slid like it's sliding in the home plate and went right in front of the plague and it stopped. But there were thousands that died that day. The anointing has the power to stop the plague. I can go all day long, you guys. I am fired up, and I am, I am not tired at all. So I hope you're, you're right there, too, because it's, the horses are out of the gate, and they are running. They don't even want to stop at the finish line. They want to keep going. I See, when I run, and I keep running like Forrest Gump, past the finish line, and I don't stop. I keep going. 
Because the scripture says when you're running, you run until you achieve the prize. The finish line's not the prize. The prize is over there. I'm going to keep going past the finish line. Some people just want to go to the finish line and just do what they've been done for one assignment and say, that's it. I did my kingdom business now. Now I'm good to go. You've done nothing yet. You've got to continue. It's time to grow up. I'm telling you, it's time to grow up, you guys. Young people, too. I'm not saying anyone in here, but young people, young adults, come on. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Come on. I'm here to help you. I'm not trying to beat no one up. I'm here to help you out. I'm here to help. Believe that. As servants, we come up, we're just here to help. That's it. Sometimes the help don't taste good. Sometimes the help is like a burning coal that just burns your lips and you can't talk for a while. That's a good thing. When your tongue is burned, maybe the father's saying you need a shh, shh, shh. We're just getting, we just got, we, we're in second gear right now. We still, we're, we're going to redline every gear, you guys. So just hold on. I'm not playing. We're redlining this thing. I'm not kidding. What is happening today? Men are trying to do what? Build things. This word, mishchat, no coincidence, is used in the destruction of the first and second temple. Wow. The first and second temple became a disfigurement. I didn't write the scriptures. I just read them and study them and live them to the best of my ability. What's happening today? Men are trying to resurrect the leprous temple again, which Mashiach's death and, bur and burial portrayed. His resurrection speaks of, let me read that again. Men are trying to resurrect a leprous temple today, and they fancify it by calling it a university, by calling it a schooling, by calling it a, a, an institute. Whenever you see institute at the end of something, you better know that's like a prison. Ask an inmate, a convict, or a former convict, when they hear institution, they're like, man, yeah, I was institutionalized. You could see, you know, it's just there. We don't want to be institutionalized. We want to be colonized. We want to be infused with his kingdom, not institutionalized. You see how sneaky men are? It's because of the leprous condition. Like I said, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to just proclaim his truth. That's it. I'm amongst family. I know it. Am I? Okay, you scared me for a minute. <laughs> Let me get the blood over the door. Remember the letter head. Come on, come on in. You got to be nice. <laughs> oh, you guys are something. Death speaks of the first temple. The burial speaks of the second temple. And notice the word Mashiach here, which is the root for Mashiach. For, the word Mashiach is the root word for Mashiach. So if the, the death speaks of the first temple, the burial speaks of the second temple, the, the resurrection speaks of the temple of the living Elohim. <laughs> Isaiah 53, which we read from. Let's look at the word for arm, Zeroah. The right arm of yod heh is the seed of yod heh The root of Zeroah is, is the root word, is, is related, excuse me, to the Torah portion, Tazriah. She conceives what? She conceives the right arm. What? And the right arm will be leprous, as I had mentioned already. We don't need to go back there. This woman conceives this. And it is the right arm of yod heh who takes upon himself the leprous condition of the woman, Israel. Or can we say Chava? And to bring it down where people are just learning to a face-to-face -face, uh, place, the church. That is why Chava's name means a dwelling place. It comes, it's related to Chai, life, but Chava means a tent. And notice out of all things, the Mashiach, Abba never says, I'm going to rebuild the temple of Solomon because I love the gold and silver in there. He didn't say that. He didn't say, I'm going to rebuild Hezekiah's temple. And just remove this, you know, the uh, Anatonia fortress off of this and remove this off of here. And we'll fit, we'll get that gold belly button. That's a leprous condition too. Get that out of there. Get the Catholic churches. I get all that leprosy off of the temple mount and we'll rebuild Hezekiah's temple. No. He says, I'm going to restore the tent of David. That's where I want to, I want to be where he's at. When he says, that's where I want to go. 
And if I was wrong about something, hey, I was wrong. Hallelujah. Let's go, brother. You know, you were right. I was wrong. Let's just both be righteous now. Let's just do that. Let's just be righteous. You could be right. I'll be wrong. It doesn't matter because he's, he's always right. Let's just walk side by side in agreement with the master and let's live in the new Jerusalem together as brothers. Can we do that? <clears throat> the face is hidden. When one had a leprous condition, they had to hide or cover. I know we're going late. Can I just finish this? We need to finish. I don't want to stop. This is today's surgery. Sometimes surgery takes a long time. But let's just do it. You don't need to go to Adam's rib. Well, Abba's restoring the rib of Adam. You don't need to go over there. You don't need to do that. Adam wasn't taking care of his rib in the first place, so forget that place. You see, Adam, he didn't take care of his wife, and then the Nachash came and said, you know what? If you don't buy her flowers, Adam, I'm going to give her flowers. And that's what he did. But he gave her something that was not good. When one had a leprous condition, they had to hide their face, cover their face, and cry out, unclean, unclean. Imagine that, walking around, unclean. You had to tell her, but I already know I'm unclean, but unclean. Imagine the attitude with someone probably. Unclean, unclean, uh, like a little stubborn, rebellious child, unclean, just like sliding your feet. That's when the rebellion's really in there, when they do that. <laughs> then, you know, it's like, whoa, this has gotten serious now. They need deep prayer. Leviticus 13.45, as for the leper who has the infection, his garments are torn and his head is uncovered, and he has to cover his upper lip and cry unclean. That's Leviticus 13, 40. The book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 40. And a leper came to him, beseeching him, and falling on his knees before him, saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. The first time we see leprosy, as I mentioned, is with Moses. The first time the, the actual word related to leprosy is seen is back when the woman said what she said, and we saw that. So take note. Let's go a little deeper here. Disease follows relationship breakdowns. Listen to me. Disease follows relationship breakdowns. It can come in, whether spiritually or physically. This breakdown involves three levels of distance. I hope you guys on television are watching and in here listening. Number one, separation from Elohim or Abba Father. Separation is caused by fear. What did Adam do? Remember we started with those verses. He hid. Fear of being rejected. He hid because he did not want to be rejected. He never felt this before. Fear and rejection go hand in hand. Everyone in here has been rejected one time or another. Separation from yourself, you begin to separate from who you really are. Not liking who you are leads to not loving yourself, and therefore separation from everything and everyone takes place. Even while around everything and everyone, you are not there. It's like you're a walking zombie. The power of the resurrection destroys this thing. Why? You are accepted in the beloved. You must walk this thing through. Ultimately, number three, separation from others. A congregation is the place you should be able to come to to receive healing in all areas of your, of your life. And today, this is what we're talking about. And this is what's going to happen. You come to congregations so that you can be accountable, be responsible, be built up, and be sent off into what Abba has intended you to do for him. This separation from your congregation, your family, can take place because of bitterness, jealousy, envy, and strife. Healing begins in reconciliation. And remember, there's three eights that we can uh, note down. You can note down if you want to or just pay attention. Number one, you have to recognize what this is. You have to first recognize where it all crumbled. You have to recognize it first. You can't confess your sin at all until you recognize your, you have sinned. Otherwise, it's just words being thrown out. There's no life in that. You're just saying something. You have to renounce the workings of the flesh and the enemy of your souls. 
You have to remove this at once from your life. That's three. And your lifestyle. Break the chains of generational iniquity. You have to resist all. Follow me here. Resist all of this if it tries to return and defeat the enemies in your life, which are the members in your own body. Adultery, lust, fornication, evils, murders, jealousies, envies. He's better than me. And I'll just get rid of all that dookie. That's a kosher word. <laughs> I told you you got to pray for me. you got to pray for me. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if it's Daryl smiling so handsome like that. I'm just like, gosh, I don't know what it is. You have to rejoice in what Abba has done for you in advance. Praise him in advance before it happens. Tell us, show him. You have to restore relationships when it crosses your path. Listen to me. You have to be able to restore a relationship if it crosses your path. You can't say, man, I've been delivered and set free. And then someone, you could tell when you haven't dealt with something. Want me to show you? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a tattletale today. Yeah, we can tell on you up here because that's where the anointing's at. So I'm coming over here to be a little safe just in case. No, I'll stand right here and say it. I'm just going to say it. You could tell when someone hasn't dealt with something. Say they don't like someone. When that individual comes around, you get the butterflies. Like, and you're like hyperventilating a little bit. How am I going to? I don't want to see. I want to. Oh, shoot. They saw me. That's how you know you haven't dealt with nothing. You know you when you dealt with it is when someone's done you wrong and they're coming and you have nothing in here. You have nothing in here. Abba might be bringing them to mold your character, but he says, let me restore. Because the battle was never between the flesh, you guys. It's in the spirit realm. But if someone wants to stay in the fleshly realm and be penalized, that's on them. That's not on us. There's so much in here. Let me move. I'm going to move way ahead. All the different details with, with what the Mashiach took upon himself. And all of these are, are connected to what? Rejection and fear and sickness and disease. And that's what these two Torah portions are talking about. The leprosy that comes from the mouth. The diseases that do come upon people. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It doesn't say life. You can tell when people aren't reading their word. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I, I have that verse memorized. That's not even what the verse said. That's your spirit saying you want to walk in that life. But you've got to admit the scripture says death in life is in the power of the tongue. And those who, eat, who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You shall produce what you internalize. What you spend time with the most is what you become the best at. Who you hang around with is exactly what you become. Oh, felt like Muhammad Ali just gave me a blow to the belly. I hear what you're saying. I know. It hurts. I know. Some of you are like going through your phone right now saying, I'm going to delete this. I'm getting off of Instagram. And that's a good, that's a good start. Do it. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For Elohim has not given us the spirit of fear. I told you there's a spirit of fear. But of what? Power. Of what? Love. Notice, you guys, look at this. Notice with things that cause torment, there's always the word spirit attached to it. You know why? You want to know why? That means it's limited. It's limited. It's not all powerful. Notice it doesn't say, but of the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. No, there's no boundaries for power. There's no boundaries for the love of Abba. There's no boundaries for a disciplined mind. No, there's none. There's no spirit attached to that. Why? Because that's kingdom stuff. That's his kingdom he's talking about. He says, my kingdom is constantly expanding. It's not limited. Romans 8, 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage against a fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba! Abba! Where you cry to him and you be still. Abba, if you don't know how to say anything else, you just cry out, Abba! And fall to your knees. Abba! Abba. Mashiach said, those who can call him Abba are the children of Abba. He says, no longer will you have to be playing a guessing game. 
He is your father. He is my Abba. He is yours. If your daddy left you alone when you were little and kicked you to the curb, the father says, I'm your Abba. If mama left you, if you were in the womb, rejected, and they wanted you, and an abortion was the plan, and you survived it somehow, Abba says, don't worry about the rejection. I'm your Abba. You are accepted by me. Think, listen to me. The one who sits on the throne says, I embrace you, and I accept you. You are my son, and you are my daughter. The world might have rejected you and kicked you to the curb and you've been on a long journey of darkness and thirst and hunger, but you have come home. I am your father. I am your Abba. Or maybe your father or your mother has left this world and you're like, what am I going to do? Abba says, I'll fill the gap in. I'm your Abba. I'm everything you need. I've always been there. You know when healing takes place? When you still remember a trauma, but there's no pain attached to it. You can remember that. You know, some people, you got to forgive and forget. Shush your, stop that nonsense. Come on. You might not forget something, but the pain will never be remembered anymore. How do we know that? A woman, when she gives birth, to a child or brings forth children, the pain at that moment, men, we couldn't even, oh, we would do this. We, would, we, we couldn't take it. We couldn't take it. But she don't even remember that pain either. She knows that it was painful, but if you say, do you remember how it felt? Abba lifts the pain. When you're really healed, you can think of anything that traumatized your life. And when it's gone, when he's lifted it, it, it doesn't impact you anymore. You're whole. The pain's not there anymore. It's gone. I'm speaking from experience. Genesis, look at this. Fear comes down to a choice. Right, Ashley? Fear comes down to a choice. You get to choose to fear or be in faith, belief. Fear was first seen in the Garden of Eden when Adam said, I was afraid. Fear was there. Fear became Adam's daddy. And the Nachash says, I'm going to sit back and let them give me all the glory for all the trouble. All I needed was one open door. I'll sit back and, and get all, all the residual income coming off of this one now. Fear is the foundation stone to every disease you can think of. And the building point is rejection on that fear. Listen to me. Fear is the foundation stone to all of these, and the building point is rejection. Rejection is born when fear has been entered, has been invited in, and now rejection is the first stone to start building the house of fear in your life. Many have been rejected in the womb. Many have been rejected while a baby. Many have been rejected by father and mother. Many have been rejected by a spouse or a loved one. Rejection is the garment for disease. I hope you're listening to me. Someone had to talk about this. We must strip this garment off through the eight levels we talked about, recognizing, taking responsibility, repent of all sin and iniquity, whether it's yours or your father's. Just read from Leviticus chapter 26. You are to confess the iniquity of your forefathers. You have to, men, women. Resist the, the enemy and all his fiery darts of deception and rejection. Begin to sing, remove all the stuff. Begin to sing the praises of Yah and rejoice in what he has done, even if you can't see it right now. Restore all by and through reconciliation within you and all that is around you. Fear feeds its son called rejection and bitterness. I'm, I'm attacking something right now. Fear feeds its sons called rejection with bitterness, envy, and jealousy. These are the children of fear. If you are operating in this, you be honest with Abba today. We're going to do a, a call up here. You run up here and don't let that be a part of your life anymore. Rejection, bitterness, envy, and jealousy will be destroyed today if you let it. Second Timothy, as it says, for Elohim has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound, disciplined mind, which is a way of thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so he shall become. 
I hope this is helping somebody. It took forever. The Father drug me through this thing. Cast out the strong men of fear and you will have your house. You will have your life. You will have your past, your present, and your future back. We have been given the authority to, and the power, the jurisdiction, the inheritance to cast out all spirits of fear, bondage, lack, constriction, and break the back of this once and for all. It is time for the saints of the Most High to stand up and praise the King for his deliverance and freedom in the spirit, soul, and body that you have. The antidote for fear is obtained through Abba who is love and loves you unconditionally. You could not earn his love. There is nothing you could have done to approve of his love. His love for you is past finding out. His love it can't even be comprehended by the entirety of heaven. Cannot be, comp cannot be com comprehended whatsoever. Begin your, your day every day with fellowship with Abba. When, you, when your eyes are opened up, lift your hands and praise him for your life because you didn't deserve it. When you open your eyes, begin to praise him for the authority you have in him. Praise him in the storms of life. Praise him for the good. Praise him for the bad. And praise him for the ugly. Because sometimes the most ugliest attitude is the one that you look at in the mirror. Right? That's your greatest, greatest challenge is you. You're your greatest challenge. Mike Tyson couldn't challenge you, the real you. There ain't no one that can defeat the real you but you. That's it. You. Praise the king because he alone sits upon the throne above watching everything and watching over your souls. Are you guys all right? I hope so. This is the kingdom mandate, and it is with and what Mashiach did himself. I'm about done right now. Matthew 4, 23, and Yeshua went about all Galilee. Let this minister to you. We're going to be praying right now. Give me about five minutes. And Yeshua went about all, you know the one thing pastors never put in their notes? Give me five minutes. We never do. We have to just say that just in case someone's watching, ready to leave, because there's different time zones. Yeshua went about all Galilee. Why Galilee? Because that's where the exile began. That's where the rejection began on, an, on, an, on, a, on a certain level. He begins where rejection is, starts and gets covered over. Rejection was covered over in the beginning, so it was covered over in a place called Golgolet. A hill, a little mountain area called Golgotha. It was covered and hidden. The Mashiach says... We're going to crucify me right over there. I'm going to crush the head of fear. I'm going to crush the seed of bitterness. I'm going to crush it so that this thing is no longer going to have power over those who come to me in faith. He went about teaching in their synagogues. I bet you that herb, I bet you they were flipping upside down when Yeshua walked in the synagogue and went and start, opened the scroll and read through the scroll. But then he began to operate in the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. They were like, whoa, oh, we never did that. And we have these long seat seats dragging through the puddles around the city of Jerusalem. We got these pretty crowned talits on. And we're walking around because we have the power over the people. No, that's called mind control. That's the only thing you got. There ain't no spirit in you, Pharisee. There ain't no spirit in you, Sadducee. That's why you're sad. You see, you guys know the joke. But you, there is no power in you. Truth brings you close and unlocks your thinking. But the power of the Ruach, the Ruach HaKodesh is what you can set you free from your addictions. <sighs> so he was in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. That never happened on the Temple Mount. That never happened in the synagogues before. They're like, what kind of strange thing is this? You see people being restored. He says, let me just make sure I do first things first. I'm going to read from the scriptures. I'm going to proclaim my mission from Isaiah 61, but I'll leave the second part out. That's for when I return as the, as the roaring lion. But I'll read the first part first, and then guess what? When the word is spoken, then we're going to allow the word to set us free. 
And Yeshua went about all the cities, Matthew 9.35, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 11, 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Bad translation. It says, from the days of John, let me just sit here for a minute. Is that all right? Can I stay right here for a second? From the days of John the Baptist, listen to me, please. From the days of John the Baptist, the Mashiach says, until now. I hope you are listening to me. From the days of the, the true Kohen Haggadol after the lineage of Aaron until now. From the real high priest that should be in the temple on this temple mount right now until now. John the Baptist, the ordained Kohen Haggadol of the Levitical order until now. It says now something is going to take place. It says from there until now, John ushered in the expansion of the kingdom, the preparation. He says prepare the way for the king. Why? He's coming to spread his kingdom on the earth. He's coming to spread his kingdom on the earth. He's coming to spread his love on the earth. He's coming to spread the heart of the Father on the earth as the antidote for a leprous world. Look at your neighbor and say, who says you can't preach the Torah? Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Elohim, listen to me. If I cast out devils, demons by the spirit, by the ruach of Elohim, then the kingdom of Elohim has come to you. Mm. Luke 9, 11, I'm almost done. And the people, when they knew it, followed him and he received them and spoke unto them of the kingdom of Elohim and healed them that had need of healing. Listen to these verses because it's an, it's an invitation for you right now. Luke 10, 8 and 9. And unto whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. There's a whole lot with that. And heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of Elohim, not heaven. The kingdom of Elohim. I want to give you a little, a little disclaimer here. Go in your Bibles and look at every time it says kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Malchut HaShamayim, right? Malchut Elohim. When it looks, when it shows you the kingdom of heaven, that's kingdom expansion. When it talks about the kingdom of Elohim, he's coming to recreate something in someone's life. So you see the kingdom of heaven, it's like, man, it's which one's which? They're both interchangeable. It's the same thing. You have the ruler's creative act coming in the midst of a people to recreate them in order for the expansion of purity, sanctification can impact the ones around them. I'm almost done. But if I with the finger of Elohim cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of Elohim has come upon you. Luke 12.32 Someone, let's all say this together. Fear not. not. Say it like you are serious because that's going to make a a devil just laugh and say, (laughs) oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Fear not. not. Stand up. Fear Fear not. Little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. These are words of the Messiah. Fear not. So we're going to connect this, this dot here. I'm almost done here. Stay on your feet. Leviticus 13.30. The priest, then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if, it is, if, it, if the sight of it is deeper than the skin and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or upon the beard. The word for dry skull is the Hebrew word netech. Say netech. It's the scab that spreads over the head first, a type of leprosy, and it's caused by leprosy. It's in our Torah portion, chapter 13. Leprosy is the cause, and fear is the effect. You need a cause and effect to find the algorithm of something. And there's an algorithm of sin and disease. You can identify the algorithm of sin and disease through character traits and behaviors. The Septuagint translates this to the Greek word throea, which means to inflict fear upon the mind with the intent to spread that fear. Interesting. What were we talking about here today? Powerful, powerful, powerful. 
Fear has spread since Eden when Adam fell. First was the touch, naga, leprosy. Then Adam and the woman hid in the trees and covered themselves with fear and fig leaves. The voice comes walking in the cool of the day, but Adam and the woman hid themselves because they were in fear. Adam and the woman became leprous and therefore became a scab, which spread to all mankind. Adam was the head of mankind. The scab began with him and then affected his wife. Even though she partook of it first, he gets the scab. In Mashiach, fear is destroyed. The spread of fear is stopped. When the kingdom of heaven spreads across the minds of mankind, fear stops. The battle is in the mind. Fear looks to be enthroned upon your mind. A leprous condition has been upon the Temple Mount, as I mentioned, called the Dome of the Rock. And this has spread throughout the globe and has inflicted, I'm going to just say it, I've been threatened by radical Islamists before and I don't care to say it. My life was threatened. But we kept ministering, we weren't going to shut up, right? They hacked all of our stuff and threatened to kill me. They called me an infidel and I was going to die. I said, you come to Shabbat and we'll get you set free, you little snake. I need a tread in wisdom, though. This has spread throughout the globe and has inflicted fear in the minds of many, but we have not been given the spirit of fear, you guys. And it's time to cast out this strong man of fear that is the, is the foundation of all sickness, disease, struggle, rejection, bitterness, homosexuality, lesbianism. All of it is. Fear has siblings called rejection, bitterness, jealousy, and envy. Those are key foundational points to all sickness, disease, and behavior patterns. It is time to cast out this strong man of fear that is the cause of all of this. And walk in the power of freedom, the power of the kingdom that has been inside of you all along. When Mashiach was here, he just came and unlocked what was in us all along. His kingdom which is and has been unlocked since you walked through these doors or tuned in online. Matthew eleven twelve, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, I could not stop reading this. Now the kingdom of heaven breaks forth aggressively. And those who are of the kingdom that's breaking forth are expanding that kingdom by force. Revelation eleven fifteen. And the seventh messenger sounded, and there came to be loud voices of heaven saying, The rain, oh my God, this hits me in my spirit. The rain of this world has become the rain of our master and of his Messiah. And he shall reign forevermore. Revelation 12, 10 and closing, done. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now have come the deliverance and the power and the reign of Elohim and the authority of his Mashiach for the accuser of our brothers who accused them before Elohim day and night has been thrown down to the ground. Fear, bitterness, hate, envy, jealousies, m m homosexualities, lesbianisms, drug addictions, pornography. That's a big one with men. Porn my, my family knows all the passwords to my phone and my computer. I, have not, I don't hide nothing. Men and women both struggle with these. These are all leprous conditions. The one I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to Shabbat because... They're speaking. That's leprosy, guys. Competition with each other, which I don't really see that going on here. Hopefully not. Worship team, you up there, you guys have a responsibility. You got to be, be on point. You got to stay on point. I know you're on point, but stay on point. This is not a rebuke or anything. This is just an encouragement. Don't let jealousy, envy, strife, bitterness, and hate come in. This, the train's rolling up here too. You don't want to be left behind on the train. You're acting as priest up here. Timothy's behind the sound. He's got a responsibility to make sure the voice comes through everything. Everyone's got to be Pastor Dave, myself. We got to keep ourselves on check. You guys, we got to be unified. Abba's trying to clean us up because he's about to do something. Yeah. 
Look at the season that we're in. Look at the season. I know there's Passovers that pass, Passovers that are happening now, Passovers that will happen. We're looking at, you know what, here's what Abba's doing now in the season of unleavened bread, of, un, of, of Pesach, leading up to Shavuot. Everybody wants the empowerment of the Spirit, but they don't want to do first things first, get the leaven out of their life. That's what we're going to do right now. Can I get the worship team up there just to strum something? The scriptures talks about strumming. It does, it, it quiets the Spirit and the soul and brings shalom. And you know the way I do this. I'm not begging you to do anything. You've heard different names of things today. If you're struggling with fear, some kind of addiction, some kind of challenge, you're just something that was mentioned today, you run up here now. I'm not counting to three. Get up here. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Run up here right now. <laughs>